funny and very opinionated Penn Gillette will be here to live to explain how every day is an atheist holiday. And our holiday gift guide takes a look at the top five games to buy this season. Yeah. I am not going to ask you about your weekend. We're we not are, allowed to. We have a we packed show. We are doing the top things on the web. <laughs> yeah. Let's go around the net. <laughs> But what they don't tell you is that sometimes stuff like this happens. Mr. Harry's never been passed. Oh, there he is. He went to the train He went to to stop driving. Right? <laughs> Why was she racing Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> Worst drivers ever. Never kill a gypsy before a race. It is very bad luck. Yes! <laughs> Tried it. Bad luck. Terrible luck. <laughs> you have one of those cars, right? Uh, well, something similar. I've got a Sinclair C5, which is made by the Sinclair company who made computers back in the 80s. Oh, yeah, funny. and I ride... I love that you have video of this. Yeah, well, that's what I do on a Saturday afternoon. Actually, on a Saturday, <laughs> that's my partner, Scott. I'm so I go, jealous. I go uh, up to the local shop in the village in that and buy the newspapers and get the milk, yeah. Do you really? Yeah. And people does it have storage for it? It does in the back, that little <laughs> hump. That little trunk? Pe people think I'm the eccentric man who lives in the village. <laughs> well, you are. Yeah, the only gay in the village. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Secondly, you may think you know how to boogie down to classic Elvis tunes, but trust me, you aren't going to win any competitions against this kid. Mm -mm. <laughs> onto the stage, and I can't blame them. <laughs> Behold a young Channing Tatum starring in Magic Tyke. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> and finally, you remember a few weeks ago when Felix Baumgartner jumped to Earth from outer space? Yeah, I remember. Well, here is a misguided recreation using only a yoga ball and an incomplete understanding of physics. I'd like to thank Red Bull for this opportunity. Sometimes you have to go really high to see how small you really are. Oh, I'm coming no. home now. Space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> you know, true story, that guy broke two vertebrae in his back and then had surgery and then posted his video a week later. So I guess he's very proud of it. Oh. Well done. Can I just say, every one of my gags there tanked in the room today. <laughs> they tanked. What tank? My gags, everyone tanked. Your gags? Yeah. Your lines? Yeah, the jokes. Oh, <laughs> your gags. <laughs> my gags tank. Well, no one I laughed. I was laughing. John, I will always laugh at you, even if it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Good night around the net. Sleep tight. Right. And now, John, you know what's scarier than Wes and Scott in an airplane? What? what? Wes and Scott in an airplane with no engine. Oh. <gasps> Now, my idea of a perfect mancation is gonna have a few different ingredients. There's gonna be danger, there's gonna be some adrenaline, and a little sprinkle of craziness. So I figured, why not cap up my Arizona trip with exactly that? I'm gonna go up in a glider and do tricks until I puke. Arizona Soaring is not only an award-winning school, but it is the largest school in the United States. Whether you want to take a ride or get lessons, they have 11 gliders on hand and give up to 40 rides a day. It's a lot of gliding. I'm with Jason from Arizona Soaring. 
And he's gonna be taking me up in a glider. This is a special glider. This is called a, a Fox. 100% full-on aerobatic glider. It can do all sorts okay. of fun, wild things that we don't typically do in gliders, but this Basically, one Basically, you're do. not gonna put me up in the sissy glider is what you're no, saying. No, this is the man glider. glider. Yeah, okay. this is the great one. This is all that this is made of? Yeah, it's all fiberglass. So it's very strong, but very light. You know what I love? It says experimental. All the really good stuff is experimental. There's uh, pedals down at your feet. Yep. Those work the rudder on the tail, which move the nose left and right like so. This controls the bank of the aircraft, right. left and right. So if you move it left, we'll roll to the left. If you move it to the right, we'll roll to the right. And okay. we use the rudder pedals and the stick together to make a nice turn. If you move it forward, the nose goes down. And okay. in a glider, that makes it go faster. You pull it back, pull the up. nose comes up, and you decelerate. All, right. All the moves that I've seen in Top Gun, Iron Eagle, oh, I yeah. would like to try today. If, okay. if you can call me Wizard while we're okay. up there. And what's your call? Zeus. Zeus, OK. Yeah. Wizard and Zeus. Yep. That sounds great. You can even have an animated series, Wizard and Zeus. It's smooth. This is like, yeah. it's like playing on a magic carpet right now. Yeah. Now, can I pull the disconnect? Yeah, put your left hand on the yellow handle. Got it. And I'll tell you when to pull it back. Okay. Okay, pull it back all the way. Excellent. And we are solo. Yeah. Let's fly her upside down a little bit. Alex. All right, brother. Here so we go. how are we going to do this? Oh, we're just going to roll it upside down. Woo! Yeah! Holy than any other roller coaster you're ever gonna be on. Yeah, okay, what are we doing now, brother? It's a clover leaf. <laughs> Very lucky. Woo! Right now, the pressure's just happening. Going for the roll. Woo! Yeah, boy! Yeah. <laughs> Bogey spotted. We're going after him. <laughs> nice. Now we're gonna do a half Cuban eight. Hey, that's the ground down there. Oh, let's do a little flyby and then we're all done. Woo! We're just flying upside down all the time. Just doing a flyby upside down. Yeah. Oh, dude, you hung in there well, too. You can't make me puke if I'm loving it. Yeah! All right, now we're coming in for the landing. I didn't realize how much I was sweating. It was great. It was a pure adrenaline rush. You get up there, and then all of a sudden, boom. He stalls out, does hammerheads, clover leaves, and you're like, what? Well, from tacos and tequila to turbulence, I've experienced quite a bit in a short amount of time. And I tell you what, I'm amped and ready for more. Arizona, you rocked it. See you on the road. Hey, that's the ground down there. That it is. Hey, we're upside down. Thanks, Weston. And for between $100 and $200, you can go to Arizona Soaring yourself and feel like you're flying. Yeah. Or you can buy some heroin. <laughs> Either one. And now let me tell you what's going on in the world for free. Black Friday. It's the craziest shopping day of the year. And each year, stores have been opening for Black Friday earlier and earlier. Two years ago, a midnight Thanksgiving opening was considered bold. <laughs> Last year, there was a 10 p.m. opening on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. But this year, stores are opening at 8 p.m. on Thanksgiving. Oh. I know, that's right. Black Friday is now blacker than it's ever been. In fact, it's so black this year, they're thinking about changing the name to Tyler Perry's Black Friday. <laughs> Hey, wait a second. Black Friday is also on a Thursday. Now there are two days of the week that are black. Mm. Blame Obama! <laughs> but, <laughs> no, they're really laughing. <laughs> but you know who isn't happy about the 8 p.m. opening? The people that work in the stores. Yeah. It's bad enough that they get abused by vicious strangers every year, but now they have to miss their own Thanksgiving dinner where they get abused by vicious family members. <laughs> It's not just fair at all. So the workers are starting to strike and are threatening to ruin Black Friday for everyone. Walmart employees have already started and Target employees are planning on striking next. Wait a minute. How is that ruining Black Friday? They're striking. Huh? 
so a crowd of loud people will be gathering outside of the stores. That sounds like Black Friday to me. Yeah. Oh, and if any of you strikers think you're gonna buy a Tickle Me Cautiously Elmo doll before I do, you got another thing coming. Oh, no. Moving on. <laughs> Up until now, it's been a commonly held assumption that people who pirate music aren't spending money on music. And according to the unbiased folks at the Recording Industry Association of America, they're also destroying the music industry itself, causing the national economy to collapse and probably stomping on endangered baby owls, too. But now, a new study from the American Assembly found that people who torrent music also buy 30% more music than those who don't file share. Whoops! But before all you pirates run into the street to celebrate a moral victory against an organization that sues homeless guys and dead great-grandmothers, <laughs> hold up, because we're about to have a statement off. <laughs> statement off. <laughs> In response to the American Assembly statement, the RIAA released a statement saying, the first statement was flawed because it didn't take into account other forms of file sharing. They also cited another study saying those people who torrent and buy more music still only pay for less than half of their music collections. Because really, if you get one Rush album, you kind of have to have the other 34. <laughs> and I'm not made of money. <laughs> Maybe the problem here isn't that people are stealing music or that music's too expensive. Maybe it's just too easy to get. No, if the RIAA want to make sure people aren't pirating songs, they should convince artists to release new albums on Edison wax cylinders. <laughs> yeah, guys, they're hard to copy, can melt in the sun, and sound great. I mean, check out this 1898 chart topper by the 71st Regiment Band of New York City. Delightful. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what Rihanna's cover's gonna be like. <laughs> and finally, I'm here with news of a shocking outbreak sweeping the entire world. Oh, nice. Yeah, hold on. The Black Ops 2 flu. Oh, yeah. Over a million people bought the newest Call of Duty game this Tuesday, and according to poll data from CNET and IGN, one out of four were struck so ill they were forced to call in sick to school or work. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's not an actual illness, yeah, okay. It's just people being so obsessed with Call of Duty that they took a day off from the real world to play video games. Oh. Well, that's a relief, sort of. But it seems kind of silly to me. I mean, no one here at G4 would ever endorse oh, no. skipping work to play a game. Oh, no. Yes! yes. Hey, dude, uh, do you mind keeping it down? I got noobs to waste here. <laughs> yes. Uh, dude, what are you doing here? Uh, playing Black Ops 2. Duh. <laughs> Duh, and you have to do it right here in the middle of my show? Yeah, there's no room upstairs. There's too many moving boxes. <laughs> yes. Cold. <laughs> this is ridiculous. If you want to play so bad, why not just call in sick? Uh, because I burned my last sick day on Halo 4. <laughs> now, please, I mean, if you'll excuse me, I'm trying to find every Easter egg in the Panama invasion right now. <laughs> and you need to do that because? Because if I don't, I won't be able to tell the entire internet that I found them. Hey, what's going on? Guys, I'm in the... I'm dude, in the... Wait, dude, come you... on. Hey, let's go. We gotta move this stuff. This is live hey, right well, now. We got come six... on, boys. <laughs> come on, boys, let's move this. We got six more weeks here. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Sorry, pals. You have an idea of much stuff? We gotta move her. We gotta drive by 2014. Let's go, pal. This on, is ridiculous. Go, come on, boys. Up, up. Hey, there you go. I guess I can get a wife or have sex with a girl or do something. <laughs> Or get your lines right. <laughs> That's the spirit. Still ahead, Kumail Nanjiani and Emily Gordon learn us good on some video games definitely worth burning a sick day for. Uh, don't go anywhere. All season long, beat the autumn chill with me and Sarah Underwood as we turn up the heat with more special guest hosts like John Barrowman, Paul Shear, Matt Myra, Damian Fahey, and Michael Costa. It's Attack of the Show every weeknight at 7, 6 central, right here on G4.
A pair of daring thieves pulled off an epic heist earlier this week when they stole over $1.5 million worth of iPad minis. Apparently, the iPads are being shipped from China and had just landed at JFK Airport when the crooks somehow gained access to the building they were being held in. They then used one of the airport's own forklifts to load two pallets of the gadgets into a truck. The criminals then drove away when an airport worker approached them, forcing them to leave behind three more pallets. As of now, there are no suspects. All I know is I didn't take them. And the two giant unopened, unmarked pallets sitting in my backyard, well, you just mind your business. <laughs> and if you make a lot of long distance phone calls, I have some good news because Skype is giving everyone a month's worth of unlimited worldwide calling for free. Yeah. Here are the details. You have to act fast. The deal is only available until the end of today, and you'll have to enter a credit card number to activate the service. I know. But if you just remember to cancel it before the one month trial ends, you won't be charged for anything. The offer covers international calls to both landlines and cell phones in over 40 countries. And finally, we have a whole batch of new photos from the set of Thor The Dark World. This is the first look at the Dark Elves and their highly anticipated leader, Malekith the Accursed. Featuring one of Thor's most iconic villains, the sequel is set just after the events of the Avengers, where our Nordic hero is caught fighting to restore order across the cosmos. Thor The Dark World will not be released until November 8th next year. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait. Yeah! I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. And now, let's learn what video games demand your money dollars, shall we? Hi, this is Emily Gordon. This is Kamel Nanjiani. We host the gaming podcast, The Indoor Kids, and we want to tell you about the five must-have video games for this holiday season. Yeah, with the holidays coming, we thought it might be best to compare these games to the family members that you'll be hanging out with when you're home this Christmas. So the first must-have game that we want to talk about is Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 is kind of like your grandmother. She's been awesome, but now she's getting kind of dark and twisted, but she's still a lot of fun to be around. Plus, she has more guns than every other grandmother combined. This game is a first-person shooter in an open world with a lot of uh, looting elements, a lot of RPG elements, and uh, it's just really fantastic. I think it's one of the funniest games I've ever played. I also think it's made me uh, want to rifle through piles of poop, which has never happened before in my life. This is a good tip. Piles of poop in Borderlands 2 will get you better guns than most other places. A lot well. of great loot, yeah. In real life, you'll probably just get... Diseases. Syphilis? Yeah. Or is that the one from sex? The Lego Lord of the Rings game is kind of like when you go home and you hang out with your nieces and nephews. It's kind of a break from hanging out with all the grown-ups and how stressful that can be. They're just excited, they're children, you get to experience a world and, and things you already knew through new and exciting, kind of fun, fun ways. It's the Lord of the Rings, but Lego. I think there's more to this Hobbit than beats the eye. And this one does cover all three movies, yeah. beginning to end. You can play as Gollum, you can play as Legolas. And you play as Gimli, son of Gloin. Aye. Don't tell the elf. Not a word. The next thing we want to talk about is Dishonored. Now, Dishonored is like your sister's new boyfriend. You weren't expecting this guy to show up, but now suddenly there's a new guy showing up. You don't know what to expect. Are you going to be friends with him? Are you going to be mean to him? Are a lot you going to try and... routes. Yeah. Uh, and ultimately, you definitely want to take him down. Damn. Dishonored is a first-person action adventure, but what's really cool about this game is the every mission, there are five or six different ways you can tackle it. You can go in all guns blazing, uh, you can use magic, you can use stealth. Um, every situation has a bunch of different ways you can tackle it. It's a really, really original story, really original art style, it's a really original everything, and in a world where we've got a lot of sequel games coming out that are also great, this is like a new fresh thing that you can add. It's got this cool, like, uh, steampunky vibe to it. And there's rats. There are rats that will murder you. Halo 4 is like that uncle of yours. It's really cool, and he's an ex-Marine, and he has awesome stories, and he gave you your first sip of beer. 
But now he just got divorced, so he's sort of rediscovering himself. He's taking, taking classes, He's yeah. taking pottery classes. He's taking improv classes. Oof. I'm excited about this Halo, actually, because this is the first one that's not being developed by Bungie. And I really think this uh, series had gotten a little stagnant over the last couple games, so it's really cool to sort of have a new, fresh take on Halo again. I like the idea of taking Master Chief, uh, who we love, and putting them in, him in an entirely new environment. I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah, and they have new bad guys, too, the Prometheans. We've been fighting the Flood and the Covenant for many, many years, so the Prometheans are the new bad guys in this game, and I really think, you know, uh, this is going to reinvigorate the series. Burning skull faces. The Walking Dead games, to me, encompass the entire experience of visiting your family. You know, it's going to be terrifying. There's danger around every corner. Tough decisions are going to have to be made. Unexpected things will happen. You will cry. Yes. And then when it's done, you'll be glad you went through it. The Walking Dead games are these uh, super evolved uh, point-and-click adventure games where you make a lot of uh, really, really difficult decisions. And what was really striking to me about this game was how good the characters are, you really feel for the characters, and every decision has has such moral weight behind it. And to say that it's a point-and-click adventure doesn't really encapsulate, it's a horror game. It's a very, very scary, very scary game. Yeah. What's awesome about these games is that there is no one is safe. In no one games. is safe. Anything can happen. And the decisions are often time limited, so you can't pause and then go look up what the best option is. You have to live, you have five seconds to make a decision, who lives, who dies, and then you just have to live with it. A lot like visiting your family. It's a lot like visiting your... Wait, who's, who's your family? <laughs>
guy, I mean, we probably can't talk about it, but the one, I've, there's a TV show where this guy goes because, on. Don't, don't say any names of any mediums because they are litigious and they will take you down. Gotcha. Let's just talk in general. In general. So think, these people know, who go out and go, I, can, I feel there's a word from Tom, from Tom. I want to go, uh, I've talked so much about the, the magic of this. Right. I want to talk about the morality go of, on. of a little bit. Go on. Uh, many of these people that do this, there's two kinds of people who do the uh, medium and talking to the dead. There's, uh, there's open eye and there's shut eye. And the shut-eye ones are the ones that actually believe it themselves. And you've never heard of them because they're terrible. The open-eye <laughs> ones, the ones who actually are lying, are right. actually much better. And they will tell you in their private moments, when they're sure no, nobody's around, that what they're doing is actually a service. They're making people feel better. These people are grieving, and they give them the afterlife to believe in. Yeah. They're able to talk to their family, and they're able to resolve some things. I think that the most valuable thing you have when you've lost a loved one, I've lost my, my mother, my father, and my sister, the most valuable thing I have in my life is the memories I have of them. And when someone comes in because they think they can help me mm. and then channels my mother and gives false information, I think there's nothing you can do worse to another being than alter their deep memories of the people they loved in their life. So why do you think they're, they're continually getting away with it all the time? Why do you think no one says, that's it, done? Well, the, the, the same reason rapists do well with women. Uh, <laughs> you, can't, you can't count it that way. You cannot say that rapists are doing well with women. They are doing a criminal act. Yes. They are not having sex. They are not meeting people. There's no relation to sex. These people are successful not because they are showing any compassion or giving any help to anyone. They are successful because they are cheating and they are doing as... As, as psychically violent an act as possible. They are taking a person who is grief-stricken and they are using that to manipulate that, to steal money, steal dignity from them and also take power for themselves. So you have to be very, very careful to remember that these people are morally criminals. So they're successful because they're cheating. You know, how is that guy able to get that money out of the 7-Eleven? Well, he held a shotgun on the guy. Mm. You know, that's the part you have to remember is that the immorality, the, hor the horror of it. And it really is bad. Yeah. And, I, and I do compare it to crimes like robbery, uh, even though I think it's worse than robbery. It's emotional robbery. Because you can make money again, but those memories you can never change. Yeah. All right, on a lighter note, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Yeah. You did a... Uh, we did a seance. You did a, a seance yeah. with him, but, but yeah. uh, there was kind of a, a, a double trickery going on. Well, no, it wasn't really trickery. It's just that, you know, in magic, a lot of times, you have to do what's called a force. Right. Which means you've got... Uh, we'll do it easily with cards. You, uh, you spread out a bunch of cards, and someone's going to pick one, and you know the one you want them to pick. Right. And there are various ways you accomplish that. But one way you accomplish that is to have a bunch of people pick something, and then put them all together, and then shuffle them up, and then pull out one, and you've added the one you want to it, and then you've done a little manipulation, so that we get the one you wanted to begin with. Okay. We were doing a seance where we had to have all these pictures, and one of them had to be thought of. The way we were going to do it was to have everyone at the seance each take a picture, and then mix them all together, and then pick one at supposedly random, and that would be the one that we would have the prediction from the Bible of. And Spielberg decided he was going to make it really hard for us. So as he felt us saying, each one of you pick one, he just grabbed one and said, this one, this is the one I want. And he uh -oh. picked the one we were trying to force. <laughs> no, it's just simply a one in 25 chance. Yeah. But he goes, this is the one I want. And I made eye contact with Teller because I'm not that much of a professional, so I went. <laughs> and then I said, don't you want to change your mind? <laughs> no, no, really. Change your mind. No, no, no. This is the one we're using. <laughs> so now, instead of having to do all this manipulation, yeah. he has just chosen Dunnated it. Him. And then uh, we won big time. And I hope he... Oh, no. I've said it publicly. <laughs> but it was, it was a miracle at the time. <laughs> kind of glad you got, it went your own way. Listen, stay tuned. We're not done talking to Mr. Gillette. More interviewing after the break. Yeah! We're back with more from Penn Gillette. Your staff loves you. Do they? They love, listen, they applaud whenever you come on. They That's love good. Look at that. 
They're crazy. It's only because you're here. <laughs> Otherwise, they, they boo, boo. All right, listen, you're back on The Apprentice. Yes, I am. I have, no, I have no knowledge of that mission, and if I did, I would not be at liberty to discuss it. <laughs> yes, I am. Re I, are you going to try to do anything different this season you than know, when you were on before? The first season I was on, my idea was I had the most successful uh, business partnership of anybody on there. I've been working with Teller for 38 years. Yep. So I figured this is, I've been working with him since I was 17 years old. It's all I've ever known. But I dealt with everybody like they were Teller. And when you're when you're working with someone for that long, you tend to go, okay, shut up, let's go on to the, and you just, you just, that's respect that you really know you trust each other. Sure. So this time out, I just acted like people weren't teller, but were just regular people. And it made all the difference in the world. I had much more fun. Did, um, you know, speaking of that, with uh, uh, you had a bit of a rough relationship with, uh, um, who was it in the last show? Um, Clay Aiken? Clay Aiken. I, mean, I don't know how I knew that. We were <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Clay Aiken wanted to talk about feelings. And I'm from New England. I don't like to talk about feelings. <laughs> So he, he talked to me for an hour and a half about his feelings about how I should be treating people. Right. Now, when I decided to marry my wife, conversation, 10 minutes. <laughs> Decided to have children, conversation, five minutes. Decided he would tell her to move everything from Manhattan to Vegas a half an hour. Clay Aiken with how I should look people in the eye when I talk an hour and a half. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's just, you know, he said, you know, sometimes you, uh, you're a little bit too, too brisk. And I went, okay, I'll try to fix that. You know, I really like you, and I, I want to talk about how you're dealing with people. No, no, I'll change that. It's all done. You know, I think you care about people, but sometimes it seems like, uh, you know, I really, I, I like you, and I really, I really enjoy being around you, but I feel like... <laughs> I just feel like we could have more of a bond than we An hour and a half! <laughs> if I were a man, I would have jumped out of Trump Towers, swan dive onto the pavement. Because there's a chance, there's a chance that somebody I know is going to see that show with me having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Clay Aiken. You know, to call your wife and say, I've been talking to Clay Aiken for an hour and a half about my feelings is a little like saying, you know, I was, um, I was raped by, uh, by aliens and I now have a venereal disease. It's, it's exactly as believable and as sexy. <laughs> It was just, it was just awful. My wife said, I cannot get you to talk for three minutes about how our children are doing. And you talk to this guy for an hour and a half about how much eye contact you make with him? I went, well, your TV cameras, and I didn't have a gun. So, <laughs> so would you then say that, like, doing reality TV is harder than being a carny? Well, no, no. I mean, in terms of actually what you do, it's very, very simple. I mean, any human being that's actually had a job has worked harder than every day of Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> it's like junior high. Remember junior high? The algebra was oh, yes. really easy. Yeah. The, uh, the, the science was really easy. Yeah. All the projects were really easy. And then dealing with the children around you was a nightmare. Yeah. Celebrity Apprentice is exactly like junior high with better acne cover-up. I mean, that's really, that's the only difference that I could see. And all I was going was, can we get to the task? Can we sell some, like, perfume or something? Can we just actually make a poster? Can we run a dr ride around the van? But it's all this, you know, it's a squabbling that yeah. I found hard. The, uh, the actual tasks are just really fun because you're doing something you don't know how to do. Mm. And there's nothing I like better. I mean, Penn and Teller are career. So you're someone who likes a challenge. You like a challenge. It's not just a challenge. Challenge. It's also the excitement of doing something, well, in Penn and Teller's case, something that no one has ever done before. I mean, it's really fun. Like, right now, we've been working for three years mm. and a ton of money dressing up a live cow as an elephant, mm. having the audience surround the cow dressed as an elephant, and having the cow dressed as an elephant vanish like that. It's a really hard trick. It's also really hard comedy because you have to kind of explain why you dressed up a cow as an elephant. <laughs> I'm not prepared to do that right now. Nope. I'm still working. Another time. But I'll tell you, a cow in an elephant suit, to me, looks really funny. <laughs> uh,
<laughs> and then you got to vanish it. Now, the wonderful thing about that is you have to build models and you have to work with mirrors and you have to do all this stuff and where the audience is going to be. And it's all stuff you've never, ever done before. And that's really wonderful. And Celebrity Apprentice is a lot like that. It's like, you know, I don't, I've never directed, you know, a, a, yeah. an ex, an, a commercial. You know, I've been in them, I've never directed them, I've written them, never directed them. I have to put them all together, do that whole thing. It's really fun to do stuff you don't know how to do. With cameras on, it's a little bit embarrassing, but you still do it. Okay, I'm jumping back to the cow here for a second. Okay. Because with that happening, all the stuff that you have to go through with the cow and that, the, the trick that you're working on, what happens if the cow poops or pees? Because cows are notorious for doing that at a split second, randomly. Yeah, well, you have to have, the, usually, the audience just enjoys that. <laughs> we call that, in computer talk, we call that feature, not a bug. <laughs> Make the something cow, of it. If the cow, if the cow poops, feature not a bug. It's a good thing. So you have to disappear that at the same yeah, time. Exactly. That's the added <laughs> thing. That's the difficulty. Just God, God, just like that. Yeah. All right. Going back to Christmas here, with uh, a, you know, a lot of the stories in the book are, you know, although it's not well, just the holiday. All, holiday. Yeah, it's yeah. about how it's, it's also in the book. It's not all just about athe exactly. atheism, but. Is is being an atheist is the holiday season a difficult time for you or what what is your take on you know because like now we're in Christmas we're in Christmas mode but we're not even in Thanksgiving. I know I know. Well, I I I like anything that's about joy and having fun and having a good time. You know, uh, one of the things they talk about all the time is the war on Christmas. You know, and it's not a war on Christmas. It's just trying to get more people included in the fun. But my wife is an absolute freak about no Christmas whatsoever. So. What we do is we have a big celebration New Year's Day. Yeah. And the children, my children are six and seven, Moxie and Z, they get to see what all the Christian and Jewish children have gotten for uh, for Christmas and Hanukkah. And all we have to do is come in over the top. That's all we gotta do. It's just a financial thing. If our children get if their children get six Skylanders, we buy seven. <laughs> so we just look at what the, all the loot they got and say, see, if you believe in God, this is how much you get. If you don't, this is how much you get. <laughs> very, very, very simple. So this year, they're going to a very fancy-ass private school, so I'm thinking we're probably buying three ponies. That's, three po what, that's what I'm guessing. For each, one for each. Uh, yeah, there's two children, so one, one for each, and then one you just plan on them killing one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they're children. They can't take care of animals. Or they could dress it up as an elephant. <laughs> and vanish it. And yeah. help you vanish Just it. Just like Dad. Along with the poop. <laughs> yes, exactly. Awesome. Liz ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Penn talk, talk like yourself for a moment. Talk like myself? Yeah. You want me to talk Scottish? I like it. Do you? Yeah. Uh, no problem. Penn Jillette, every day <laughs> is an atheist holiday is available now. <laughs> Computer is worthy of your Christmas tree. Our holiday gift guide continues right after this. Oh, I like that. Sugar! Beautifully done. Thank you. On the next Attack of the Show, Joan Berriman is back for Thanksgiving week and a countdown of the greatest turkey videos of all time. Ben Stan Lee is here to chat about POW Entertainment and his new mobile game, Verticus. Plus, the unpredictable Steve-O is here live for some killer karaoke. Also, Chris Gore rounds up the best box sets of the season, from Tarantino 20 to Bond 50. And Weston Scott shugs some Arizona hot sauce. I'm sure that won't kill him or anything. Coming up next week on AOTS. And now some holiday gift advice from Santa's techiest helper, Matt Myra. Yeah. Once again, it's Matt Myra! Yeah. It's the final day of our gift guide, and today we're talking computers. Yes, we are, John. Now, people call me an Apple fanboy on the internet. I know because I cry about it, but here, <laughs> check it out. We are recommending a gaming PC that has nothing to do with Apple. It's the Ooh. Falcon Northwest that I gave a 5 out of 5 to. It's the Tiki desktop, everybody. Oh. This oh. is beautiful. It genuinely is. I don't know what you would describe that color. Uh, sky this is blue. This is teal oceanic blue. All right. Oh. Leave it to Barrowman. Uh, this is a slim tower gaming PC. The guys at Falcon Northwest make a lot of custom high-end computers, and this is no exception. One frequent problem with slim tower PC, I'll tell you what, when you try to plug something in the back or, or take something out, tends to fall over, right? They mm -hmm. solved the problem. How'd they solve it, everybody? 
by adding rock. That is granite. That is actually granite. It is awesome. Yeah, it's not just a sample for a Home Depot countertop. Nope. Uh, as far as ports go, you got a ton. There's 10 USB, US, uh, total USB ports, eSATA, DVI, and HDMI out. There's also a slot loading Blu ray player. Huh? John's not so much a fan of slot loading. No, no, no. But... It's, I, I, it's, I just, I just want to hug this. Aww. He's going to take it home. Uh, even more impressive is the inside of this thing. It is beautifully constructed. Take a look in there. Oh. Look at that. You see those? Uh, you see those tubes? What are they? I'll what tell you they? what they are. Liquid cooling, everybody. No way! Yeah, she runs hot and she gets cooled down just as oh, fast. Oh, all right. So, oh, that's really exciting. <laughs> so, if this if this thing has got all that equipment in there, the liquid cooling, and yeah. it's supposed to be good with games. Yeah. How good are the games on this machine? The games are fantastic on this machine. They run fast. Yeah. Now, the configuration we spec is sort of the middle of the road for this computer. It's the Ivy Bridge processor, two gigs Nvidia GTX 680 and 8 gigs of RAM. Again, these are the middle of the road specs for this thing. Mm -hmm. Play 007 Legends on here. Take a look. The game itself, not so much fun, but the graphics are great. This machine handled it perfectly, and the best thing about it, it handled it quietly. No giant fan noise. It was just beautiful. Uh, it's not the most demanding game in the world, again. It's running Call of Duty's engine, so there are some graphics in there, but there's no, you're not gonna get any sort of drop frames or anything like that. It's not gonna stutter. It's great. And the Intel processor in this clocks in at 3. 0.5 gigahertz. That is awesome. And Super fast. I am taking this home because I love this. The Falcon Northwest <laughs> Tiki desktop starts at $1,500, and the one right here is about $2,200. That's still, I think, a good deal. I Matt, know. Matt Myra, why should gamers have not this particular one on their list? Because right. this but is one just like it. Because, kids, you got to pay for quality, and you're going to get quality. $2,200 for a hand built gaming rig. The level of detail the Falcon Northwest guys put into this. <laughs> Hard to match. And the custom paint jobs are super cool, I guess. And they taste really good. Yeah, you literally, you can't. And you can get this any color you want. Any design you want. You tell Falcon, they'll do it for you. That's All the right. beauty of it. I might be calling Falcon. Thank you, Matt Myra! That is it for today's Gadget Front. Mm. You are so weird. Oh, no, that was wonderful. That's a beautiful computer. <laughs> So weird. Hey, check out over here on the, the Twitter oh, yeah? board. Uh -huh. Yeah, we've got one here. It says, any crazy family holiday stories, traditions around the at Team Barrowman house you would care to share? The only thing we do weird is we play hide and seek. That's not weird. <laughs> oh, with your parents? With my parents. <laughs> and my dad will go That's and hide. Awesome. My dad will go and hide for and sometimes we'll leave him there for like three or four hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he loves it. The last time he likes he did, his alone time. Yeah, the last time he did it with my niece and, ne and nephew, they had to go get the neighbors to bring him out of one of the cupboards under the kitchen that he was hiding in, and he couldn't move. Oh. Oh. Did you know four... he was under there? Yeah, we left him. He was there for four hours. He, a, he had his whiskey flask understand. with him. He was fine. He was fine. Let's do today's epic fail. Yeah. <laughs> and now the three rules of hunting. Practice gun safety. Communicate with other hunters. And most importantly, be familiar <laughs> with both the local and state weight restrictions. It's time for today's <laughs> epic fail. There he is. <laughs> Peter the Wiggly. That there's another pig in a tree. Oh, sit up there. <laughs> It's hard not to laugh at that. Thanks to Pendulette, Matt Myra, Emily Torch, from Mail on Johnny, Sarah Underwood, Preston Skunk, John Berriman. That's it, yep. How you thank me? Thanks, thanks, honey. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Your course